this is a story that occurred in 2018, but it became more important in 2020. And here it goes. I was in my backyard and I wanted to install a fire pit so I could hang out in my backyard and have fires all year round. And I went back there with a contractor and I was telling him my ideas about the kind of fire pit that I would want to have. And originally I wanted a round fire pit, like 22 to 24 feet across, white stones, cool fire structure, you know, in the middle and, uh, you know, cemented together, wooden benches, some electricity for lights, charging things and stuff like that. And the contractor looked at me and he's like, no. <laughs> and I was like, no, what do you mean? No, he goes, he goes, you don't want a concrete and stone fire pit back here. And I'm like, I don't. He says, it's too much work. It's too far from, from your driveway. And we'd have to get a machine to move the concrete and stones down here. And we'd tear up your yard. And it would cost a lot of money and take a lot of time and be too much work. And I don't want to do it. And I thought about it. I never, I didn't think about the work at that point of what the work was going to be. And so um, he was right. And I thought about the distance and the time and the weight and the destruction. And I thought, no, I, I guess you're right. I don't want that. So I was standing there in my backyard in 2018, thinking about the kind of fire pit that would be the opposite of that, which would be the simplest fire pit that could be assembled in the shortest period of time with the least amount of work, which is like what I think about all the time, basically. And I was arranging all the objects in my mind in different ways, different things I knew and different characteristics and properties that made something advantageous or disadvantageous. And I was thinking about starting, one way to, to do this stuff is to think about the thing that doesn't work and then think of the opposite. So the opposite of, of, sm of smallish rocks and concrete and water is a single long thing. So I thought, what's the longest single thing that two people could carry down here? And I came up with a, a four by four piece of wood, which is a, a square cross section of a piece of wood. And, um, and I thought, okay, so, so two people could carry, you know, these four by fours down here. And then I thought, um, you know, what size is this fire pit? And I wanted it to be about, about, you know, 20, 20 to 25 feet across. I figured 22 would be good. So um, I thought, okay, so if I got some four by fours that were, you know, eight feet, eight feet long or 10 feet long, then they could be cut at angles and I could make like a geometric structure back here and then, and then screw them together and then put stones in them and then put the fire pit in the middle of that and accomplish what I wanted. And then I thought, well, what would, what would this shape be that would be the best shape? And I was running through different shapes, like a square. First you start with like a triangle and then you go to a square and you keep going and got to a hexagon and realized um, that would be a strong shape. I knew hexagons were strong. And I already previously in my life spent a lot of time thinking about geod geodesic structures and triangles. Never thought about a hexagon before. So, uh, so I was thinking the good thing about a hexagon is that the angles are known in advance. And so the contractor could cut them on the driveway. Wouldn't even need to bring like a heavy compound miter saw down there with like a generator, none of that. You could do everything on the driveway, bring these pieces of wood down, stack them up into a hexagon, screw them together, fill them with rocks and call it a day. And I was thinking about man, hexagons, like super efficient shape because I comparing the amount of work, he told me to take like days to do it out of stone and concrete. And he picked a gigantic number like, I think it was either four or $6,000 to do, which was a lot. And also like not necessary for this situation. And, um, and I was thinking like how many trips I was like, okay, like if you had, I don't know, six sides times two, 12 pieces of wood, guys could bring it down here in 10 minutes, you know, it'd be faster, you know, you could get it all done in a couple hours as opposed to many days. I was like, oh, it's less work and it's less weight and it's less steps. 
And so I asked him how much it would be to make a hexagon out of, out of wood. And it was like, you know, $500 to do that versus like thousands of dollars to do what I originally imagined. And I was standing there and I was struck by um, other hexagon. The way I think is like, oh, how many other hexagons do I know? And how could I apply hexagons in other ways in my life? And, you know, where are hexagons around me? And I know they're in bulletproof vests, for example. And they're in um, honeycomb and that's used in uh, space materials, super light, super strong. Then I started thinking about honeycomb. And I'm like, what is honeycomb? It's where the bees put the honey. And this is, this is 2018. This is before, before I got my beehives by, by two years. And I'm back there thinking about, you know, bees put honey in, in a honeycomb structure because it's for the same re exact reason that my contractor could do the least amount of work to create the biggest volume by making this uh, fire pit out of, in a honeycomb shape, which is the strongest shape that takes the least amount of materials to have the biggest volume. Same is true for the bees, is that they do the least amount of work to gather the energy, which in their case is sugar. And in my case, the energy is money. And I'm trading money for work. And they're trading honey for work. And so they want to they wanna build a structure that costs the least amount of honey to stash the most amount of energy. And I was like, that's fascinating. I'm just standing there talking to this guy. I'm like, that's really fascinating about bees. Bees know how to do this automatically. And, 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 and then I realized that there's like a confirmation bias because all the bees that built honeycomb out of, you know, uh, cubes, they didn't live <laughs> because it, it was less efficient and they lost the game of competition. So I was thinking about the bees and energy optimization, that they use this optimal structure. And just like in business is, is if I had a truck that, that uh, my trucks have, get about you know, six to eight miles per gallon, which isn't very good. Um, but if I had a truck that got, let's just say 12 miles per gallon, double, double the fuel economy, uh, then I could charge less money. And then I would have a competitive advantage over all the other junk bees in my habitat because I could charge less and, and still cover all my costs and create the same margin in the end. And I was like, that's an advantage. So just, just thinking about this idea. And then I was thinking while I was sitting there about um, the idea of a sugar molecule is also a hexagon for the same reason. And I was like, that's amazing. I was like the, the molecular structure of energy, which is sugar which is what powers all living things, is a hexagon. And the bees put it inside a hexagon. And I thought that was amazing. And, uh, and so I'm doing you know, this eco project called Project Honey Lake. And I decided to use jars that were hexagons. And the idea is that the sugar in this honey is in the shape of a hexagon. The bees put it into a hexagon. And I'm packaging it in a hexagon because it costs the least amount of work to stash the most amount of light. And this, this got me thinking uh, in 2018 about how cool honeybees were in terms of optimization and, and the business of the bees. I was like, they're doing business. I like they're in the business of making honey. You know, they're in the business of optimizing energy transfer, energy from the sun and, and converting it uh, into a structure with the least amount of work to store that energy in the structure, to bank that energy, to buy time, to not work the 300 or so days a year. There's no flowers. I was like, that's amazing. I was like, they're doing business. And later, uh, two years later, when the pandemic hit and I was looking for something to do in my backyard, with my fire pit and hanging out, I thought, I'm gonna learn about bees. And that this, this idea that uh, sugar is energy uh, came from designing my fire pit. And that led to the way um, explaining the secrets of the bees and Project Honey Lake.